We all set for trade. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah, we got ourselves a trade. Well after 2 a.m. Eastern last night, news broke that the 76ers have finally traded James Harden to the Clippers for a package of players and picks. Here are the details. 76ers sending Harden, P.J. Tucker, and Philip Petrusev to the Clippers for Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, Nick Batum, K.J. Martin. The draft picks go into Philly, a 2026 first-round pick from L.A., by way of OKC, a 2028 first rounder and two second round picks. Also a pick swap. I will note here, we have learned that the Clippers are sending a 2027 first round pick swap to OKC, clearing the way for the Thunder to move that protected 26 first round pick to the 76ers. And oh yeah, the Sixers will waive veteran guard Danny Green to create the roster space for the trade. Harden to LA. Have at it. Call that skates. Daryl Morey can take his time now that Tyrese Hatsy is balling out. He took his time about 12 hours after we recorded. I wake up this morning, suddenly James Harden is on the Clippers after months of wanting to be on the Clippers. I've heard this called a blockbuster trade. It does include a former MVP, a guy who led the league in assists last season. I don't know if it necessarily qualifies considering mm. the return to Philadelphia, um, but this is definitely interesting. There's a lot of ball handlers on the Clippers right now. They've been after James Harden. They've been after a point guard for some time. They brought in Russell Westbrook at the end of last year. He did okay. Did okay in the playoffs. Has looked nice to start the season. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George handle the ball quite a bit when they're around. Yep. And then we know that James Harden is going to be taking a huge share of possessions, likely as the point guard for this team, setting up Kawhi, setting up Paul George. I hope that means what Russell Westbrook is okay coming off the bench. Didn't go great in the other L.A. stop he had, so we shall see. It's a different part of his career, but, man, it's going to be weird to see these four sharing the court at some point, probably. Yeah. I mean, uh, four of the greatest 2010 players out there, four guys from the L.A. area as well, all coming home to play on the same team. But I think everybody is going to gr- agree that this is going to be the ultimate prove-it-in-the-playoffs team. Yeah, This might help the, uh, the Clippers during the regular season, but you got to be healthy come playoff time. You got to show up come playoff time. Yeah, I guess by all reports, it was critical for the Clippers to keep Terrence Mann. That's right. <laughs> out of this trade, and they did. Daryl Morey blinked, and he said, "Fine, we won't take Mann. Okay. You know, get us those picks, and and we can talk about what the Sixers got here, and if we, if we like it or not." But they managed to do that. The Clippers did. They kept him out. You know, Norman, no Norman Powell as well. Um, they just consolidated a bunch of power forwards yes. in Morris and Batum and Rocco. Uh, you know, even K.J. Martin sort of as a 3 4 type guy, and they just put them all together and said, all right, we'll take Harden. But, man, they are really just trying to go all in here and maximize the, the Kawhi-Paul George duo experiment. Those guys can opt out of their contracts in 2024. Harden is already a 2024 <laughs> free agent who can't be extended here. They know they got their new dome right around the corner. But you're right, Trey. You can't get too excited for this because it's like, okay, all of these guys, whether because they're injured come playoff time or are just like up and down come playoff time, you don't know. You don't know. You just absolutely don't know, and they're just doubling down on that, it feels like. Um, But, you know, credit to them for keeping man, and I would even say Powell, keeping like some sort of a bench intact. Because you need some depth if your guys go down. So Yeah, okay, and there. getting P.J. Tucker back is a kind of a good yeah. throw-in, I think. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if he ends up starting uh, for this Clippers team. I guess it's going to be Harden, Kawhi, P.G., P.J. Tucker, and Zubots are their starting lineup. And they've got a solid bench in Westbrook and Bones, Norm, Mann, and Plumlee. Like, that's a decent rotation. And like you're saying, the guys aren't necessarily reliable, but now you've got four of them who aren't necessarily reliable. <laughs> Two of them could be reliable any night, Skeets, and that's probably part of it. This is a little bit of Kawhi Leonard insurance, a little bit of Paul George insurance, especially during the regular season. Those guys can uh, take an unauthorized or maybe authorized rest, and you still have somebody who can create for themselves and create for others. Harden is so funny to think about. His last seven games, I'm talking about the playoffs. Within those last seven games, this guy did score over 40 points in two of them. Yes. He is yeah. good. Now, he had some brutal games, especially the ones at the end where it was like 13 points and 9 points. And, you know, it's just wild to think, like, yeah, he is a three-time scoring champ. He led the league in assists last year. He helped Embiid get an MVP, if we're being yeah. honest. Yeah. He is good, 
but the highs are so high and the lows are just brutally low uh, time and time again in the postseason. But it's just wild to think that he's paired back up with Westbrook and they're in L.A. And obviously Kawhi and PG are there. And man, that sounds like an incredible team. Eh, six years ago, right? <laughs> Maybe not so much now, but wow, Bummer doesn't care. He's like, who cares? I mean, I'll pay all these guys. I got the money. Let's go. Let's see if it works. And I mean, honestly, the hometown marketing, it probably helps here. The Lakers are the team in L.A., but all the good guys from L.A. play for the Clippers <laughs> right now. So uh, maybe third time's a charm. It's weird that Westbrook and Harden are now on the third team together. How often have teammates been teammates in more than two places? Can't be all that often. Uh, but, yeah, I guess we will see how it goes. Uh, my father-in-law's in town, and this morning I told him about the James Harden trade because, you know, what else am I going to talk about in the morning? Yep. He says he can't seem to make up his mind where he wants to be. That's exactly right, but he knew he wanted to be at the Clippers, at least since the summer. Now he's there. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, he requested a he requested a trade in June. <laughs> yes, from Philadelphia, and he basically said, "I want to go to L.A. I only want to go to the Clippers." And it took a while, but he got there. Uh, and a part of it was maybe him rejoining the Sixers bench on Sunday. We talked about the ideas like he gonna practice. Like he was set to practice, I believe, today. Mm -hmm. with the Sixers as part of his conditioning and the ramp up to his return. But we were debating like, ooh, do you even want to do that if you're Philadelphia? The way Maxie's playing, the way the team has started, like now nah, you're going to put him back in here. Like maybe just get rid of him. Maybe just make this move. And that's what Maury did uh, in the end. Let's talk about what they got back and how they made out here. Uh, what would you grade this for Philadelphia, the return of players and then all the sort of draft picks, draft capital and swaps and all that that they got back? Right now, I'm giving it a C for the Sixers. I think they downgraded, obviously, from a talent perspective. Sending out Harden, who had his playoff failings, obviously, but he can't have an opportunity to help them lose Game 6 and Game 7 without those great games that actually got him there, right? Yeah. Uh, so now they're bringing in three 30-year-old power forwards. Nick Batum, 34. Morris, 33. Robert Covington, 32. And then, like you're saying, K.J. Martin, who might actually be the best player, the most helpful player uh, they're getting right now. But obviously, it was all about the draft picks uh, for Daryl Morey. That 2028 Clippers unprotected pick, that one's going to be nice. That one's going to be a hot one on the market, yeah. as will the pick swap in 2029. We have questions about the Clippers staying healthy Currently, in the 23-24 season, you add on another four or five years, the question marks are even bigger. Yeah. So I would say a C for the Sixers right now because they're worse. They definitely are. But those picks are going to be be valuable. And obviously, Daryl Morey wants to make more moves between now and the trade deadline. Yeah, that's why I almost can't give it a C. It almost feels like an incomplete. I hate to do I it. See. Yeah, uh, because... You know, first off, they, they won this trade solely because James Harden is gone, if we're being honest. Like... You've removed, he's a talented player, but look, we went through the ups and downs of this guy and just like the nightmare that he can be and the headache that he can be. He's gone. P.J. Tucker is off the books. And now, in theory, Maury has a package of players and specifically picks to acquire some sort of third star or running mate alongside Maxi in the backcourt. Woj basically reporting that the Sixers wanted to get two first-round picks out of a Harden trade and believe that those assets coupled with the second-round picks and a pick swap, give them a chance to pursue another high-level guard in a trade to partner. That's the question here. Who is this mystery high-level guard? Do you have any guesses who Maury probably has on, like, on his list here of like, ooh, that's who we could go get. Who you got? Could it be two-time All-Star Zachary Levine? I believe it could be Levine. It definitely could be. He's a great scorer. He sometimes is overtaxed as the number one guy, but between... Maxi and Embiid. He doesn't have to be the number one guy who would fit nicely around both of those players. Maxi's creation skills are great. The space he would give Embiid is great. He could carry second units uh, if they decide to stagger. Definitely a trade target that I could see the Sixers being interested in. Who knows if the Bulls are ready to actually press the button after their huge win last night. Um, who else could be in the mix? I don't know other superstar guards that are really available right now. CJ McCollum? I suppose, if you consider him a star. <laughs> Hasn't made an all-star team, but a good player. Uh, who else? Malcolm Brogdon. <laughs> Malcolm Brogdon, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Definitely not a so. superstar. He's, he's an award winner. Yeah, he's not a guard, but what about those Raptors guys? What about one of those? OG. OG. I think that's the one I would want the most yeah. for his outside shooting prowess. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, 
But anyway, that intrigued me. Yeah, who are they going to try and go get? All the contracts the 76ers are receiving are expiring. They don't impact uh, their cap flexibility in 24-25. I think Bobby Marks has Philadelphia projected to have between 50 to $65 million in room next season. So I guess you could step back and say, well, they don't make a move at the trade deadline for like this, you know, hypothetical third star, uh, you know, high level guard, whatever you want to call it. Could they be a player in free agency? But then again, a lot of guys don't move in free agency anymore. And it's not a, it's not that incredible of a list in free agency either. Yeah. The free agency class next year isn't anything special uh, right now, but this has been Maury's plan even since before the Harden trade was to make sure that they have a clean cap sheet next summer because they think we're going to have Embiid at the worst one season off an MVP year. Tyrese Maxey making a huge jump, maybe makes the all-star team this year and max cap space. He says there's not going to be a team as good as us that has max cap space. Think about this summer. It was like the Rockets, the Spurs, the Pacers. The Pacers are the best of that bunch. We're talking about a team here that's at least making the playoffs, winning playoff series, and who knows what they do this year. So at least it's an attractive situation to get to play alongside Embiid, Maxi, and if they make a move here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. For this year, I kind of feel like Tyrese Maxi is going to be you, Skeets. When we're out walking in a group together, Mm -hmm. you're fastest. Yeah. There must be times when you turn around and think, where is everybody? Oh, Jesus, yeah. What are you guys doing back there? Just lingering. And that's going to be Tyrese Maxey because <laughs> it's all old guys. Coming back to the clip or to the Sixers here, which is why I think K.J. Martin might be the most important player they get just because he can run and jump and play alongside yeah. Maxey uh, when Embiid is sitting on the bench. Gives him a little defense as well. Just don't really know what you're going to be getting from Batum, Morris, or Covington at this point in their career. Yeah, I mean, Covington is not the uh... – individual defender he used to be I think that's sort of past him I think he's fine as a team defender still sure yeah but Toom is like gives you like flashes of like oh yeah this guy you can still play for 15 minutes in league cuts well you know obviously a vet Morris I don't Morris when he moves to a new team sort of pops off suddenly and then falls back into his role so maybe there's something there but I'm with you I think KJ Martin of the player of the names in this is a guy that could actually contribute um but we'll see here. I would. Were you pumped when you saw this news on your phone at like 6.30 or 7 o'clock whenever you woke up this morning? Were you excited? Or you're just like, oh, okay, good. They did it. Oh, is man in it? Oh, he's not? Okay. Good job, I guess, Clippers. <laughs> I would say, I would say honestly both. Like, it was exciting that it got done. Like, oh, cool. We got a notable trade in the first week of the NBA season. There was a lot of blowouts last night, so it made it great for us podcasting. Yeah. Uh, but am I, like, hyped as – on the Clippers as a team? No, because it's impossible to be here at the end of October, nearly the beginning of November, thinking, yeah, they're going to be great in May. Nobody believes that right now. Yeah, true. And the Sixers, like, I now think whatever Maury does with these players and picks, like, is this like his his last sort of big move, so to speak, to keep a Joel Embiid, like, happy in Philadelphia, in Philadelphia? And, and, and maybe they just continue to win a bunch of games and Maxi literally is like an all-NBA guy like super early in his career, and maybe that's enough, but it does feel like what what Maury does next year, and whoever that player is, be it in a trade, be it in a signing, like that is huge, huge Mm -hmm. to obviously them going further than a second round and obviously trying to compete for a championship just to keep your big guy happy. I think that like this is going to be a big one. Otherwise, of course, we're going to hear like, get me out of here. Yeah, exactly. Like you you, you botched it. And I assume that there's already a little bit of Embiid buy-in. On this, when you consider you so. the way that Maury operated alongside James Harden, when Harden was the MVP candidate, keeping him advised on moves, taking advice from him, you have to think that the same is going on in the front office between Maury and Joel Embiid. Now that Embiid is the MVP candidate there, so maybe the way the season started with Maxi looking completely ready to take over helped. You know, allowed Daryl Maury to take a slightly worse deal, not getting Terrence Mann back, which seemed to be the sticking point over the summer, and. Maybe he just has some serious backing from the ownership group there in Philadelphia to say, yeah, this might not be the season, but we're making moves and we're doing the right things to keep Embiid invested in our success. Any other thoughts here on the Clips, Sixers, Blockbuster deal? I saw some people throwing Blockbuster in the title. Oh, oh wow. I don't know about that. This is a sock duster. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> you see a lot of stuff on your ground. You just clean it up with your sock and throw it in the laundry. 
You know you do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah I know how you do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a dog. There's a lot of hair. And that's what this feels like. Uh, a deal that could have been done at any point in the past four months. Exactly. Got done tonight. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was a wild thing to wake up to yeah. this morning.